Good evening, everyone. I'm filling in for Lily Flores Vale this afternoon, who is on special assignment covering our top story. And as you may have heard, some unbelievably tragic news today. Selena is dead. Selena Cantania, the Tejano music superstar who was from Corpus Christi, died this afternoon at Memorial Medical Center after being shot earlier today at the Days Inn Motel off I-37 at Navigation. A police standoff situation followed with a woman in a pickup truck holding a gun to her head. And there's a lot more to this story. For that, we go live to the Days Inn Motel, the scene of that shooting. Nancy Laughlin is there with our live eye to bring us up to date. Nancy? So the standoff has been going on now more, for more than five hours. And let me rehash what's happening here. Corpus Christi police say just before 12 o'clock, Selena was in a hotel room here at the Days Inn. They say a woman came into the hotel room and shot Selena in the shoulder and in the back. Now, Selena was able to get to the lobby of the hotel room, and folks there called 911. Rescue crews rushed her to Memorial Medical Center, where she died a short time later. Now, since then, the woman police believe did shoot. Selena has been holed up in a pickup truck, and I don't know if you can see it. It's right behind this orange semi. You can see the SWAT team surrounding that. They've been negotiating with her since then by telephone, trying to get her to turn herself in, and she is not doing that right now. Now, I'm told by police also that she's become very agitated by reports from the news media, so they are not releasing any information about this woman. Unconfirmed reports, though, that she is some sort of business partner of Selena's. Again, Selena Quintanilla, if you're just tuning in, dead at age 23. Joe, back to you. All right, Nancy, the way they're communicating with this lady, I understand it's by cell phone, is that right? It is what they're calling a special hostage negotiation telephone, and they were able to get close enough to the woman to give her a phone, and the police have a phone also. They don't want any batteries to go dead or anything, so they're using special telephones in this case. All right, they're continuing to negotiate, uh, trying to prevent uh, further bloodshed. Right. Stand by, if you will, because we may come back to you later on in this newscast, but we have uh, a lot more uh, to tell you now. As we said, uh, Selena pronounced dead just past 1 o'clock this afternoon uh, at Memorial Medical Center. That's also where Selena's father spoke with reporters less than an hour ago, and we want to go live now to Memorial Medical Center, where Julie Imrich of our staff is standing by with uh, our live eye to bring us more information on what happened there. As we said, the father held a news conference, and here's Julie now. Julie, what can you tell us? Joe, it was just 30 minutes to go. Uh, Selena's father, Abe Cantonese, as you said, held a press conference for the media. He is understandably stricken with grief. He was very close to his daughter. Mr. Cantonese says Selena has had trouble with this woman before. There is a person that was running the business for Selena. Did I hear she connected to the fan club? Yes, she was uh, uh, the president, of the, uh, started out as the president of the fan club. And uh, then she was hired as an employee for Selena uh, at her stores. And there were some discrepancies with the fan club. And uh, it resulted in, in her shooting Selena. I just want them to to remember her the way she was a loving person. That's all I can say. Joe, there's been no word on funeral arrangements yet, but just to show you um, the impact that uh, Selena's death will have on the people here in Corpus Christi, flowers uh, and a note were left on this fence here at the hospital that says, I want to be just like Selena. I even adored her, too, and this was to the family of Selena. Back to you. Well, I understand that the fans of Selena have been gathered at the hospital uh, really ever since uh, she was taken there shortly thereafter. You must have talked to some of them. What did they say about her? Well, we did ask uh, her father at the press conference. One of the women that, that I spoke to, it was a fan that had never even met Selena before, was, uh, was crying. And her father said that um, he believes that her music will live on through her fans. And more on this as, as the story develops. As we have said, it is uh, far from over. The police standoff continues. Selena, age 23, uh, died today at Memorial Medical Center after being shot at a motel uh, off uh, navigation in uh, I-37. Selena, well known for visiting schools in the area, telling kids to uh, stay in school and stay off drugs and so forth. And we will have more on this story as it develops, uh, and certainly more during the course of this newscast. There is other news today, including the weather, and we'll have more on that during our 5 o'clock program in just a moment.
The SWAT team was called, and police have been negotiating with the woman through a special phone. Police are not talking about a motive, but during a news conference this afternoon, her father speculated that the shooting occurred because of some missing money. According to Quintanilla, the suspect was involved with Selena's boutiques. She was uh, uh, the president of the, started out as the president of the fan club, and uh, then she was hired as an employee for Selena uh, at her stores, and there was some discrepancies with the fan club, and uh, it resulted in in her shooting Selena. Fans have maintained a vigil at the motel throughout the day, apparently hoping to get a glimpse of the woman who gunned down the number one female Tejano artist. Lily Flores Bella, 3 Eyewitness News. And the standoff continues at the scene of that shooting, that motel at Navigation and Interstate 37. Nancy Laughlin of our staff has been keeping a vigil for us there to let us know what's going on. Nancy, give us the latest. Joe, the standoff has been going on for more than six hours, and it appears that this is not going to end anytime soon. Corpus Christi police have brought in some floodlights you can see right behind me. They are very, very patient, as folks here in Corpus Christi know, so this could last for several hours. Now, again, to reiterate what's going on here, just before 12 o'clock, Selena was here at the hotel. She was shot in the shoulder and in the back somehow managed to get to the lobby and rushed to Memorial Medical Center. Now, since then, this woman who police believe that the picture that you're looking at right now is a woman police believe shot Selena and kills her. Now, right now, she is in this red truck that you're looking at. She has a gun pointed to her head. Corpus Christi police are negotiating with her by special telephone. They say that this does not appear to be ending anytime soon. Uh, they're also telling me that they're not going to confirm her identity because she is listening to reports and getting agitated. And that's why officers are being so tight-lipped. Joe, back to you. Okay, Nancy, it is, uh, of course, difficult to keep information secret when so many people know uh, of Selena. But uh, I assume they're just willing to wait for as long as it takes? As long as it takes. That's what police officers are telling me. They want to end this peacefully if they can. Especially, I've got to tell you, there's a ton of people out here, and police have asked us to say they're encouraging folks not to come out here. This is a very serious situation. These police officers are heavily armed, and there's a large crowd out here. And it's a very dangerous situation, and they're asking folks to leave and not. If, if anyone has any intentions of coming out here, they're asking them not to. Okay. Hopefully people will comply with that request. Don't go out there. It's, there's nothing to see. We'll keep you informed right here. Uh, we're continuing with this story. It is an important one throughout the day. Selena Quintanilla has been a, a household name among Tejano music fans since she began singing professionally at the age of nine. Deanna McQueen of our staff has a look now at her award-winning career. She was born in Lake Jackson, Texas, but raised here in Corpus Christi. She started her career singing in cantinas, nightclubs, and backyard weddings. Her career took off in 1981 with the band Selena y Los Dinos, but her first national success came in 1987 when she was chosen female vocalist and performer of the year at the Tejano Music Awards. But her biggest honor came last year when she won a Grammy Award for Best Mexican American Album, Selena Live. Her many gold and platinum albums were not only big sellers here in the U.S., but in Mexico as well. She spoke to us recently um, about her first all-English album, which is due to be released this summer. We're going to start the English album. I was supposed to start it this week, Monday, to fly to Nashville and start recording with Keith Thomas, but I got sick. So we're going to start on that. It should be out uh, June or July. And along with the, the Spanish album, the Hano album will be out at the same time. She also had a feature part in the forthcoming movie Don Juan DeMarco, starring Marlon Brando, where she played a mariachi singer. Fans are keeping a vigil by the motel where the singer was shot. I, I feel depressed because she's a very, very famous girl, and I knew her since she was small, and um, this is a tragedy. I was a big fan, but no, she's, she was young. She was too young. She doesn't deserve that. I just love Selena so much. I saw her every show she comes out. I feel like crying. Deanna McQueen, 3 Eyewitness News. As you might imagine, since fans learned of Selena's death this afternoon, they've been visiting her home in the 
Molina neighborhood on Corpus Christi's west side. Julie Emrick of our staff is at that home right now to bring us up to date on what's happening there. Julie? Well, um, we are at the home of Selena on the west side. As you can see behind me, the fence is just covered with flowers and letters from her neighbors and fans of all ages. Um, deputies are controlling the traffic. It's been so heavy out here. Uh, the feeling I get from many of the fans that I've spoken to is, is disbelief. Joining me now is Norma Pena. She is uh, a neighbor of Selena and just spoke with her several days ago. Uh, Norma, what can you tell me? What was Selena like? Selena was a loving, caring person. Everyone loved her. As you can see, all ages loved her, even young and older people. She was caring. She loves animals. She has dogs running around everywhere. And she was just a person that you just fell in love with her because she had a beautiful smile. And um, she was just one of a kind. And her music was the best. And I will miss her. I will miss her a lot. Do you get the feeling that most people are, are still in shock? I am, yes, because I am still in shock. I was surprised when I heard it, and I am still in shock. And I just came down to see if people, because earlier there was a lot of traffic, and I was just wondering. I just came to see if they're paying their respects, and, and they still are, and I'm, I still am. Very good. Thank you very much thank for joining you. us. Uh, Joe, back to you. Okay, thank you, Julie. Live from the... Uh, Quintanilla compound, really, a, a compound of three homes that Selena built in the Molina neighborhood on the city's west side. We will uh, keep you updated on the story. We promise to do that, and we'll have an update toward the end of the newscast. But there is other news to tell you about as well. ...can do for the Tejano world what Selena was able to accomplish. We all saw Selena as a phenomenon in the music, Tejano music, because she was, she did the crossover to go international. So I think we're going to miss a lot. We're going to miss her especially. But just before her death, Selena recorded an English album. Virginia heard it just a few weeks ago. I was very impressed. I even told her father that song is beautiful. It doesn't even sound like Selena, but it's beautiful, you know. But yet it's great because Selena, uh, maybe that album will be coming out pretty soon. And the music industry predicts that album will be as big a hit as her past ones. Cheryl Alexander, 6 News. Well, no matter where you turn the dial on those Tejano stations tonight, uh, you're going to hear Selena. KSAB Radio will continue their on-air tribute to Selena until about 9 o'clock tonight. Mm -hmm. KSAB is uh, what? 99.9 on your FM dial. Yeah, yeah okay. tune in if you'd like. Our coverage of the death of Tejano singing star Selena will continue in just a moment. And Dale Nelson will be along on this somber and wet night with his weather forecast right after this. dead at the age of 23. Just moments ago, police arrested a woman suspected of gunning her down today at a Northwest Side motel. Good evening, they everyone. They rushed her and, and grabbed her. They rushed in the front of the white pickup, grabbed her. She's on the ground. They're standing over. They, they uh, pushed her down on the ground. Uh, they've called for all the officers. All the officers have their pistols and uh, stuff drawn. That was uh, a live play-by-play -play account of that arrest as given to us by a hotel guest whose room was overlooking the scene tonight. We brought you that a little bit earlier, live here on Channel 6. It's been a long day, everybody, for not only us, but for fans of Selena Quintanilla. A long and a very unbelievably sad day. Selena's death has touched the lives of Tejano music fans here and all over the world. And we have so much to tell you tonight about where Selena's music and career were headed Many believe her death comes just as she was turning the corner on truly superstar status. Fans are remembering Selena through her music tonight. We'll take you to a local club that's sponsoring a Selena music marathon this evening. And we'll replay a piece that aired during our 6 o'clock news. We've gotten a lot of calls about that. Look back at Selena's career and we'll show it to you again. Sonia Weinkoff has been following today's standoff with the police all day long. She joins us live now from the scene where just moments ago at Navigation and I-37, the suspect, the woman believed responsible for the fatal shooting, was taken into custody. You saw it live here on Channel 6. Sonia, what's the latest out there? Well, as you just said, Mark, the standoff ended after 10 hours of very intense negotiations. The suspect, Yolanda Salivar, came out of the truck. The 
Police officers used the door to bump her. They pushed her down to the ground. They jumped on top of her and restrained her. She did not have a weapon at that time, which is how they were able to do that. Um, we were watching it from across the street. We also had a lot of information from one of the guests that was inside the hotel who described everything play by play. He said that she was extremely emotionally fatigued. And when I asked the assistant police chief why, what it was that actually helped get her out in the end. He said she just plain got tired and gave up. Obviously, police are extremely pleased that this did end without any further bloodshed. There were about 300 Selena fans outside at the time. When it was declared over, there was huge applause. Back to you at the station, Dot. Sonia, I realize it's early, but is there any indication about who this woman is tonight? Yes, unofficially, police still don't want to confirm it, but Yolanda Salivar was a former business associate. Apparently, Selena had come to the hotel this morning because the Q Industries, Quintanilla Industries, where Selena products are made, is about half a block away. So she came to the hotel to meet up with Yolanda and get some documents, at which time, apparently, a gun was pulled, and, of course, the rest is history. All right, Sonia Weinkoff reporting live from where the arrest occurred just moments ago. And during Sonia's report, we showed you some videotape of the suspect uh, being taken into the city police headquarters downtown. That happened just moments ago. Now that we've brought you up to date on what's happened here in the, just the last uh, 25 or 30 minutes, now it's time to go back and kind of bring you up to date on how everything transpired today. Two shots ring out at the Days Inn at 901 North Navigation just before noon. Selena is shot twice in the back. The female attacker ran from police and barricaded herself in a truck. SWAT team members spent the entire day trying to talk her into surrendering, and those negotiations, of course, wrapped up just a few moments ago. During an emotional news conference, Selena's father released she this was, information. Uh, uh, the president of the, uh, started out as the president of the fan club, and uh, then she was hired as an employee for Selena uh, at her stores. And there were some discrepancies with the fan club. And uh, it resulted in, in her shooting Selena. And once again, police have now identified that woman as Yolanda Saldivar. And she was holding up inside of that truck for more than nine hours tonight. Well, it's hard to explain the rush of emotions coming from Selena's fans tonight. Many of them have been standing in front of the Quintanilla home in the Molina neighborhood. Others have been driving by in their cars and looking for a sense of purpose in what happened today. And Eddie Flores has been at the family's home tonight. He found it surrounded by fans trying to return some of what she gave them. As soon as neighbors heard the news of Selena's death, they flocked to her parents' house where a younger Selena spent her teenage years. Candles were lit and the front gate of the home was soon decorated with whatever anyone could find. Many who'd come were still in disbelief. I can't believe it. I can't believe she's dead. That's why I'm here, so I could, uh, so I could convince myself, I guess. It was just no words, I guess. Just, you know, a silent moment. You know her, and you went to school with her and everything, and she, you know, because we live just right there, you know, and then for us to just find out she just, you know, died, it's, it's hard. But it's not just the fact that Selena was a celebrity that has everyone shocked. People here from the neighborhood who knew her say she was just plainly a nice person, one who remembered where she grew up. She was out here, she was giving us chips and sodas, and she was being real nice. And I went to one of her friend's weddings, and she sung for us and gave us autographs and stuff. She lost her dog, and we were trying to help her find it. We, we ran with her. Yeah. So she decided to help you with your career? Yeah. And what did she do? She gave me $250 to sing on national TV. She was real friendly, talkative. She knew what she was, you know, she was going to become. What Selena didn't know was how tragically her young life would end. Eddie Flores, 6 News. This goes to show you not only a wonderful singer, but a wonderful person. Yeah. Of course, most of us know Selena through her music. That's right. We hear her on the radio. Some of us, like myself, have been fortunate enough to see her in concert. Just before her death, Selena began working on her first English language album. She'd already recorded three songs under producers who worked with performers like Paula Abdul, Barbara Streisand, and other superstars. She had been recording in San Antonio, Nashville, and New York. Her marketing director says Selena was scheduled to appear on several national talk shows this summer. Well, tonight the dance floor stands empty, um, and the Tejano clubs around town, there's a lot of mourning.
Yeah, Selena was not just a, a South Texas treasure, of course, but uh, many of Selena's fans are turning to uh, each other and her music after a tragedy like this. And Mike Sims went out to show us what some of the clubs are doing out there tonight. Tonight, the dance floor stands empty at the Texas Tia Hot Tejano Music Club. DJ Langoria shows us pictures from a recent Selena concert there. Selena had signed his cowboy hat, but today he retired it. For every teardrop that fell, look at all the smiles she brought to people's faces. You know, bitty bitty bomb bomb. People just, man, they, uh, you know, they just get wild. Now, people here say she'll always be the queen of Tejano music. She was great at what she did. She was a great person. She loved people. And people loved her. And everybody looked up to her. And, and you know, she's like a role model. The band Innocencia was scheduled to play tonight, but instead, the music of Selena fills the air. Club employees expect a crowd later on tonight. Even though she's gone, her music will live forever. Record stores are already starting to sell out of Selena's music. This is Ven Conmigo, an early Selena release. It's the last CD in the store, and it's on hold until another shipment comes in tomorrow. Linda Cantu's 10-year-old daughter idolizes Selena. Tonight, they came to the record store to buy a Selena tape. She just can't understand, and I'm just trying to tell her she's gone to sing with the angels, and that's the best I can tell her right now. Selena might have gone to sing with the angels, but her music will play on in the hearts and minds of her fans. Mike Sims, 6 News. Well, Selena was not only a South Texas treasure, she was an international superstar, and the fans here in Corpus Christi had a very personal bond with her. You know, we're fans, uh, but a lot of Selena's fans are young kids. That's right. Selena took every opportunity to talk with kids, tell them how important it was to stay in school. Selena told her young audiences that she let performing get in the way of going to college and getting a degree, but she started on one recently. Selena made a music video, too, to spread her message about staying in school. She said it was an honor being a role model for kids. A lot of people are obviously wondering tonight about funeral arrangements. Those arrangements are still being made. Mm -hmm. And we will pass that information along to you as soon as we're notified about that. In the meantime, you know, some folks are coming up with their own ways of remembering Selena. I got a phone call tonight from a man in San Diego, and he says that people in that town are tying black ribbons around the car antennas, and he hopes that uh, people in other South Texas cities will do the same to remember Selena. Nice gesture. Yeah. Up next on 6 News, one of OJ's neighbors testifies about what he saw that fateful night. And later, a retrospective of Selena's rise to superstardom and more on the apprehension of that superstar's accused murderer. Stay here. Well, Selena wasn't born in Corpus Christi, but she is definitely considered a hometown girl. You got that right. Uh, what's so tragic about Selena's death is that her life ended just as her career was beginning to really, really take off. Kim Covrubius took us on a journey through Selena's short, incredible career earlier tonight at 6, and because of some of the calls we've gotten tonight, we decided to replay that story for you. Selena Quintanilla, a vivacious 23-year-old Tejano singer with the world in her hands. The young singing sensation's music and talent took her across international borders and into Tejano fans' hearts. Raised on Corpus Christi's west side of town, Selena was determined to come home to her roots after long shows on the road. Despite already achieving superstardom, the singer had more hopes to fulfill and dreams to achieve. It's kind of scary because you never, you never think you're going to get that far. And now that we've achieved some of the goals that we've set out, it's, it is kind of scary. Because you don't know what to expect after that, you know. You don't know what to, to want anymore. <laughs> Selena's clothing store was booming with plans to open a new store in San Antonio. Her acting career was budding with big parts on Spanish TV. The Grammy Award winner swept through February's Tejano Music Awards, and her latest CD, Amor Prohibido, went quadruple platinum in the United States, with sales exceeding 400,000. Six News talked with Selena last year about what she hoped to be doing 10 years down the road. I just hope still to be alive, hopefully singing still. And maybe later on, 10 years down the road, I hope to have a family by then. Yeah. Selena's performances weren't a solo affair. Her close-knit family joined her on stage. Oh, Selena's husband played guitar. Her sister could be found on drums, while another brother wrote and played in the band. Abraham Quintanilla, Selena's dad, was in charge of them all. How can you work with family? Right. Everybody says it's impossible. It's 
it's not impossible. I think when you have the same goals and you take an interest in, in, in love for what you do, it all comes together and it's like teamwork. And you kind of forget about the family thing, right. you know? And if, it's like any other family, we get into our little disagreements, right. but there's dad to come in and, and settle everything. If Selena vowed not to let pressure and disagreements get in her way, it was her love for family and her music that kept her alive. I am what I am and I, I will never, take my own life. Um, I think if God gave me life, then I'm going to stick with it, hang out through thick and thin. But I'm very happy with Kim Covarrubias, 6 News. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, uh, that's how I want to remember her. Mm -hmm. Such energy, such life. Yeah. She's terrific. Uh, sports is next. Uh, there's an update tonight on the other major shooting incident in the city, the murder of Selena Quintanilla Perez. Police now say a green sweatshirt that Selena was wearing when she was shot is missing. The blood-stained sweatshirt is considered physical evidence in the case. It may have been cut off when Selena was being treated by EMS personnel at the scene or at the hospital emergency room, but it was not recovered from the hospital or the morgue. Late today, police said it was most likely destroyed accidentally by hospital personnel, but the people at Memorial Medical Center deny that. They say the shirt could easily have been left at the crime scene and then picked up by souvenir hunters. The mourners were able to visit Selena's grave at Seaside Memorial Park for the first time today, and a steady stream of visitors took advantage of that. But experts on grief management say Selena's death, along with yesterday's multiple shooting fatalities, could leave some people, particularly children, with the feeling of simply being unable to cope with it all. Julie Imrick of our staff has more on that. Beverly Galvan and her daughter Vanessa joined the steady flow of mourners at Selena's gravesite to say a final goodbye. Her mother says her five-year-old had a tough time dealing with Selena's death. And when she first heard, she was really scared. You know, she cried a lot at first until she understood, you know, where Selena was going. You know, it's just how she went is what scared her. Diane Yanez says her eight-year-old is still confused about the international star's death. And last night when we went to, his, to her house, he thought that she was there and he said, no, you know, she's not there. They, you know, she's, they done buried her. One local psychologist says the best thing for parents to do is to take time out to answer any questions their children may have. Talk about these issues with their children to allow their children to express their apprehensions, their insecurities. And what about the law enforcement officials who've been working through this rash of tragic murders? Sure, it's their job, but they may be personally affected as well. They were busy at the scene comforting loved ones, telling them the bad news, as well as walking through the bloodbath of the Walter Rossler Company, gathering evidence. It will affect them. Uh, I think it, uh, it leaves them with a feeling of, of, of great despair, of helplessness, of uh, fear. Through all the city has endured these past few days, it's likely many of us have a greater appreciation for life. Julie Emrick, 3 Eyewitness News.